Thank you very much. Thank you, Ghana Dance Ensemble, for keeping us so very well entertained during this time. You may all now be seated. My name is Ruthann Richardson, and I have the honor of steering today's affairs. Permit me to move this along as we acknowledge our distinguished persons for the occasion. We have in person with us today the South African Minister for Human Settlements, Honorable Mamuloko Kubai, accompanied by the South African High Commissioner, Madam Grace Janet Mason. I hope I have that right. Shall we welcome them with a round of applause? Also, our Minister for Works and Housing, the Honorable Francis Asin Subwachi, is here with us. Thank you very much, sir. The Architects Registration Council Board Chair, in the person of Mr. Richard Dade. Shall we acknowledge him? The President of the Ghana Institute of Architects, Mr. Foster Osai Akono, as well as the Register of Ar the Registrar of the ARC, Architects Registration Council, Dr. Emmanuel Eyabotre. <laughs> Deputy Registrar for the ARC, Madam Josephine Petese. As well as the, honorable, the Honorary um, Secretary of the Ghana Institute of Architects, um, Fifi Samawatri. We want to start with a call to prayer. We will invite architect Nathaniel Ninai to give us an opening word, after which we will move quickly through our events. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your love this morning. We thank you for the gift of life. Father, you have made this day possible. And you have gathered here together to induct your sons and your daughters into the profession of architecture. Father, this morning we are inviting your presence. The Lord, you take us through the ceremony. Father, the various aspects, may you take control and let today be a success. In the marvelous name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Mr. Nathaniel Ninai. We'll quickly take the welcome address for the occasion from the Registrar of the Architects Registration Council, Dr. Emmanuel Eya Botri. Can we welcome him with a round of applause, please? Thank you, MC. Good morning. The Honorable Minister of Works and Housing MP for Bansma, and a special guest of honor for this occasion, Honorable Francis Asensubuache, the Honorable Minister of Human Settlements for the MP of the Republic of South Africa, and who also doubles as the keynote speaker, Mamoloko Kubai, Ak Richard Nidadi, the Distinguished Governing Board Chairman of the ALC, all board members present, the Mayor of Accra, Head of the Local Government Service, all heads of agencies, directors, staff of the Ministry of Works and Housing, and the, the High Commission to South Africa, who is also with us this morning, colleague registrars, the President GIA, Act Foster Osaya Kuno, GIA Council members and fellows present, presidents and reps of Allied Build Environment Professionals, our MPs who are in our midst this morning, heads of Department of Schools of Architecture, then our good looking inductees, parents invited guests the media and all other protocols observe. I deem it an honor and a privilege to welcome you to this 23rd induction ceremony for 55 newly qualified architects 
to be on the standing register of the Acted Registration Council. I believe that you've labored, you've toiled, you've studied, and you have approved yourselves as worthy to be on the register and to practice architecture in Ghana. On behalf of the governing board, the chairman, and then the council, I want to congratulate all our good-looking architects and say, Ayiko. Can we please give them a round of applause? Now, having welcomed you, I'd like to briefly present the state of the ALC address. The ALC, as an agency of the Ministry of Works and Housing, has a five-fold mandate. Under our first mandate, that has to do with approving courses of study for the conduct and standards of the qualifying examination. The Council this year has visited the two schools of architecture. We did interact with the deans, the head of department, the staff, and then the students. Following the observations made, the Council subsequently made some recommendations and is working hard towards assisting the schools. Under our second mandate, that has to do with maintaining and publishing register of architects in good standing. You bear with me that this year we've published the list of architects in good standing and architectural firms as well. We have also periodically on our website have been updating architects and firms in good standing. Currently we have about 12 1,270 architects and 230 architectural firms on our register. However, we only have 650 architects and then about 105 architectural firms that are in good standing and that are qualified to practice architecture in 2023, which I believe is not very encouraging. Our third mandate has to do with prescribing and upholding the standards of professional conduct and ethics. And I believe that our choice of, uh, the choice of our team for this year, upholding the highest moral and ethical standard as a built environment professional, was informed much by this mandate. The Council has initiated action and with the unflinching support of the Honorable Minister, we are pursuing the review of the Actors Act 1969. It is our hope that by next year, or next year by this time, when we meet to induct another set of newly qualified actors, we may have our Actors Act review. Then when it comes to the control and practice of architecture, the Council has formulated a policy that is aimed at improving the work of the council. And one of the things that we are looking at now is also to expand our ARC offices. We have the blessing of the minister, we have had drawings, and we are hoping that very soon we'll begin with the expansion works. As a council, over the past one year, we have completed our five-year strategic plan. We have had a scheme of service. We have had a condition of service done. And then we are doing our best to make sure that before I leave the office as the registrar, at least we have the ARC offices completed. In terms of securing the highest practicable standards, which is Will I say that one of our core mandates, uh, fortunately led by the Engineering Council, there is a working committee that is in place and that has developed a framework to address the issue of unauthorized development and the frequent collapse of buildings in Ghana. The Council, through its compliance activities this year, we have compelled quite a number of foreign architects who otherwise were practicing unlawfully to regularize their practice. We have enhanced the working relationship 
with all our key stakeholders, especially with the Ghana Institute of Architects. We are also pursuing a policy that will ensure that MMDAs have architectural sections, not just engineering sections, when you visit the MMDAs. And then they also have qualified architects employed to be with them. We have said this time and again that it is not right to have people who are not qualified to be assessing the designs of architects. And it's something we're working hard with other key stakeholders to have it done. Quite recently, we also visited together with the Registrar of the Engineering Council. I know that GI and AI, uh, engineers have also done similar. We visited the flood devastated communities in North and South Tong. And we have collaborated with other professionals or professional bodies to design temporary and permanent engineering solutions. Our team for in the induction ceremony this year, as I've mentioned, upholding the highest moral and ethical standard as built environment professionals. I just pick up the letters M-O-R-A-L and then ask myself what is it that we want the newly qualified actors to be looking at. First of all, M, I just want to encourage you that resist as much as possible the concept of modernism and its impacts on holding your values. As an architect, you always have obligations, but there are also opportunities for you. Upholding your Higher standards of moral and ethical values will ensure that there are always opportunities for you. Make sure you build very good relationships and then make sure that you're also concerned about your reputations. Make sure that much as you are an architect, renowned, you are also respectful and avoid being rebellious. Be admired and make sure that you are not too aggressive and abusive in practice. I also encourage you to be motivated by love for humanity and sustainable environment. And make sure that you are a light that shines on the path of addicts, especially with our clients. And make sure you also have listening ears. May the Lord bless you. May he lift his countenance upon you and make you wealthy architects. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Eyaboche. We also want to warmly welcome all institutions and heads of agencies here with us today. We want to acknowledge the persons of the MP for Aoutu Senya West, Madam Gisela Teta Agutui. Thank you very much for being here with us. As well as all fellows of the Ghana Institute of Architects. You understand why when you grow. Shall we now take the opening address by the ARC board chair, architect Richard Ni Dadi? Good morning. Uh, Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, Francis Asensubuachi and the Honorable Minister of Human Settlement from the Republic of South Africa, Mamolaku Nkensani Kubai, and the High Commissioner of the Republic of South Africa, Registrars of Governing Councils and Regulatory Bodies, Heads of Schools of Architecture, Executives and Members of the Ghana Institute of Architects, the Institution of Engineering, the Institution of Surveyors, and the Ghana Institute of Manners, Executive Secretary of and then President of the Ghana Chamber of Construction Industry, cherished sponsors, media delegates, inductees, and family members, distinguished guests. Now, respectfully, I would like us all to observe a minute of silence in respect of the Queen Mother of the Ghana States. If we can be upstanding and observe just one minute of silence.
May her soul have repose in the bosom of the Lord. Amen. Good. Uh, once more, a special warm akwaba to Mamaloku Nkensani Kubai. Uh, we hope that you enjoy your stay here in um, Accra. I believe this is your first time. Seventh time. Oh, okay, so you're no stranger. So, Akwaba. So, you're welcome. Okay. Right, um, I'd like to start by congratulating you once more. Uh, Registrar has done that, but I'd like to congratulate you once more for attaining this milestone in your lives. Today, 26th October 2023, marks your formal and recognized transition into the noble profession of architecture. And it is a good time, or probably the best time, to share with you uh, a few thoughts on the relevance of the theme which the Registrar has spoken about. Uh, morals refer to a person's own principles regarding right and wrong. Ethical comes from the Greek word ethos, and in this context refers to the codes of conduct of the architectural profession. To start with, we need to recognize the global relevance of this theme. As you step out to practice as built environment professionals, you will discover that this theme resonates with the global community of architects and our allied professionals and it indeed fosters a sense of unity and shared values. Being an architect comes with immense responsibilities. As lead stakeholders in the development of the built environment, architects are very often the first point of contact in the process of the building of fiscal facilities. This means that your designs will influence and determine how people will live how they will sleep, how they will work, and how they will interact with the environment. This part brings in its waste ethical obligations that require a focus on the well-being of the target group and the immediate environment. Simply put, you are called upon to have as a basis for the evolution of your endeavors inclusivity, accessibility, and sensitivity to the cultural milieu. In the words of the Finnish architect, Yuhani Palasma, architecture is a way of thinking about the world, a way of shaping the world, and a way of being the world. Our brother Francis Kerry from Burkina Faso simply defines it in his way. Architecture is not just about building, it me it's a means of improving people's quality of life. And these are the things that we want you to carry with you as you go along. As an architect, you are not expected to be a mere professional, but an ethical steward of the profession. And this must be done at the highest possible ethical level. You need to constantly remind yourself of the long-term impact that your creations will have on society. As you know, buildings always outlast the architects that created them. This goes back to ancient Egypt. Look at the Parthenon in Greece. Uh, look at other great civilizations. And you see that there are all sorts of buildings. St. Paul's Cathedral. You can see the... Even in contemporary times, you have the Sydney Opera House. And all these resonates with timelessness. So simply put, what we're saying is that you must have at the top of your agenda this idea of applying natural proportions, golden sections, and human psychology. If you do this, you will transcend the changing trends and you will adapt and indeed mutate from time to time so that whatever you do will stand the test of time. You also need to align yourself with contemporaneous issues such as climate change, social justice, and equitable 
access to resources. Your profession as architects requires that you use your unique attributes to contribute positively to these challenges as you strive to achieve ethical practice. In conclusion, as an architect, you have an ethical responsibility with the power to create and shape a more sustainable future for all humanity. To set you off on your professional journey, there are a few key words that you need to take away with you. These include contextual sensitivity, adaptability, sustainability, aesthetic excellence, clarity, and balance. And whilst you do this, you need to be truthful, fair, and honest. Once you hold these tenets close to your practice, you'll achieve those high levels of moral and ethical standards that are expected of you. Once more, congratulations. Welcome to the fraternity, and thank you for your attention. God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. Boche. Indeed, architecture is our way of shaping the world we want to live in and leave as cultural legacy for incoming generations. We want to acknowledge as well our sponsors for today's event, EPP Books, Italian Aluglass Limited, Atlantic Computers, and Crane Constructions. Thank you so much for sponsoring this 23rd induction ceremony. We'll take the goodwill message from the president of the Ghana Institute of Architects, architect Foster Osai Akono. May we welcome him, please. Good morning. Um, Honorable Minister, um, May we be upstanding to observe a minute's silence for the, um, the late architect Adutai Brown, who was um, a member of the governing board and the past president of the Ghana Institute of Architects. Architect Brown would have been here, he was here last year. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you. Minister of um, the Ministry of Works and Housing, Honorable Francis Asensu Boatier, Minister for Human Settlement, uh, Republic of South Africa, Chairman and members of the Governing Board of Actors Registration Council of Ghana, the Council of Ghana Institute of Architects, colleague architects, Registrar of Actors Registration Council of Ghana, past presidents of GIA, parents and guardians, the media community. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the 2023 inductees on, their, on this fateful day, 26 October 2023, as they watch the clock tick to be inducted as architects, having gone through professional training for a minimum of two years after the attainment of their mandated academic degrees from their respective universities and having passed the Ghana Institute of Actors 2023 professional practice examination. It is with great pleasure that I warmly welcome you to the 2023 in you, the 2023 inductees on behalf of the GIA Council and the entire mem membership of the Ghana Institute of Actors into the fold of practicing architects in Ghana. As soon to be associate members of the Ghana Institute of Architects, you will be duty bound to uphold the Institute's constitution, regulations, bylaws, code of ethics, conditions of engagement, and scale of fees, and any other statutory documents 
govern the practice of architecture and its related disciplines in Ghana. Collectively, we are a body of knowledge. Hence, you are being entreated not to sit on the fence, but to get involved and actively participate in the programs and activities of the Institute. Our personally place calls or call on each and every one of you to serve the Institute on any of its committees and programs. Let us remember that united we stand, divided we fall. Let us remain strong. As architects, we must see ourselves as change agents, socio-ecologists. We must see the future that others have not seen. We must lead the development dialogues in our communities, considering it first and foremost as our corporate social responsibilities. The money will definitely follow. We have been trained as problem solvers, deep thinkers, but we always relegate these aspects of our training to the background and allow the system which does not reward merit and innovation to corrupt or swallow us. I do not know if we are enthused about the built environment being created day in and day out in Ghana, the uncontrolled nature of development, the lack of development control, the non-existence of access in our metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies. Ghana is in crisis not only with respect to its economy but architecture as well. Non-architects are sitting around the table at the municipal, metropolitan and district assemblies, ministries, departments and agencies and taking architectural decisions which is the preserve of membership of the institute. I believe this is so because we as architects have over the years being comfortable in our private practice doing one building after another. Some of the few architects who find themselves in the public space get consumed in the system. If we continue with this attitude, we may allow ourselves to be extinct. We, as an institute, pledge to support you through our continuing professional development programs and other initiatives to enable you to become an effective practitioner, policy developer, technical advisor to mention by a few, and to help you maintain the highest standard of the profession. In partnership with you and taking the public sector, namely metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies, ministries, departments and agencies, educational institutions, among Others concurrently we will be able to have positive impact on society through architecture. Let us take a cue from this African proverb by Victor Odoe Atsem. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, then go together. Since we all have different strengths, let us collaborate among ourselves, share resources, that's technical and non-technical. Dream big to create jobs for ourselves and grow by holding our hands together. We may remain poor and may not shine if we continue to remain in our small corners and be content with the small pictures we see around us. In some few minutes, you'll be inducted into our fold and the legal title architect will be conferred on you. Remember that the conferment of the title architect on you is not the end in itself, but rather the beginning of learning the profession, noting that experience is the best teacher. The GIA Council will call on you all the 55 uh, 2023 inductees to join us and contribute your part in the form of knowledge, time, and other resources and professional excellence to mention by a few to make the membership of the Institute of Architects an attractive and an enviable one that is called to sit around the decision-making table in our motherland. Be encouraged as members of the profession whose membership share a common interest in architecture, urban design and planning and for that matter the built environment that together and with unity of purpose as well as selfless attitude we will be able to 
develop the built environment of the Ghana we want as architects. Once again, welcome to Ghana Institute of Architects. Long live Ghana Institute of Architects. Long live Ghana. Thank you. Thank you very much, architect Foster Sayakono. We recognize the hard work and toil of U55 inductees here today. And I believe that there's a valedictorian speech to be given by one of you. The newly minted architect Gabriel Yao Osei. The Honorable Minister, the President of the Ghana Institute of Architects, the Board Chairman of Architects for Tracy Council, Senior Architects, Fellow Inductees, Family and Friends, Ladies and Gentlemen. On behalf of the newly admitted architects, Class of 23, I would like to welcome you all here for this great occasion. It is indeed a great day to rejoice and be glad because today marks an important day in our lives. Yet, it is the beginning of a journey. Let's give thanks to the Lord for his good and for his steadfast love and yours forever. Today, we the class of 2023 stand at the threshold of a new chapter in our lives. A chapter that had been defined by our pursuit of architectural excellence here in Ghana. I consider it a great honor to be invited to speak to you as a valedictorian of our graduating class. Our journey as aspiring architects has been marked by dedication, passion, and an unwavering commitment to the art and science of architecture. We have spent countless hours studying researching, designing, sketching, and reimagining spaces driven by a vision to shape the world around us. Our experiences have not only honed our skills, but also molded us into creative problem solvers and visionaries. Fellow inductees, as we reflect on our time spent in architecture school and our various architectural firms, we must acknowledge the invaluable guidance and mentorship provided by our professors, resource persons, examiners, and senior architects from the Ghana Institute of Architects and the Architects Registration Council, who have been our guiding light throughout this journey. They have shared their wisdom, challenged our thinking, and nurtured our growth. Their guidance, support, and unwavering commitment have been instrumental in shaping our career path and making us better professionals. Let us express our heartfelt gratitude to them for shaping us into the architects we are today. To all our administrative staff who offered their assistance in diverse ways to bringing us this far, we are much grateful. I want to take this moment to thank our parents, guardians, and loved ones for their prayers and support throughout this journey. Even in moments of self-doubt, your love and encouragement fueled our determination to come this far. We are so blessed to have had you by our sides. Our journey to becoming professional architects, however, has not been without its challenges. Many of us here have experienced the heartbreaks and torture of architecture. Recalling way back in architecture school and in our architectural firms, we have had sleepless nights, had countless redos, faced daunting deadlines, complex design problems, demanding clients, and sometimes the harsh realities of construction. I am certain that some of my colleagues, including Salisu, William, Ernest, Gillian, Jennifer, 
Ifwa, Paula, Charity and the likes understand what I'm talking about. I even remember some nights when we are scheduled for group discussion on Google Meet and only two or three people were online. Ophelia and Victor had gone offline and forgotten that they were even supposed to be taking us through their discussions. Either they had fallen asleep because they were tired or what, only God knows. Despite all these, we persevered, learning from each other and each challenge, growing stronger with each setback. We have learned in this journey that true success lies in our ability to overcome obstacles, learn from failures, and keep pushing for it. As we step into the professional world, we do so with this sense of responsibility. We have the power to shape the future to design spaces that promote inclusivity, sustainability, and innovation. Let us never forget the profound impact we can have on society through our work. Let us always keep in mind that our journey as architects is not a solitary one. We are part of a global community of designers, builders, and thinkers. Let us collaborate, share our ideas, and continue to learn and grow. Congratulations to my fellow inductees. To get to this point was an important achievement in itself, to which I commend you. The personal competences that got you here, passion, commitment, tenacity, and open minds to learn will be important throughout your lives. Nurture them, because they will be even more important than what you have learned. Our time as probationers has been has prepared us for the incredible opportunities and challenges that lie ahead. As we step out into the world as architects, let us do so with confidence, integrity, and deep commitment to making a positive impact through our work. I wish you the best for your lives. Embrace the challenges and get ahead of the change. Find your purpose and take your share in shaping the new world. Become creators of the future. And remember, today marks a milestone in a beautiful journey in our lives. May you continue to be blessed and follow your goals and ambitions to success. Thank you, and may our architectural dreams soar to new heights. Thank you for that heartfelt speech. And we can all appreciate where you've come from and the journey you have yet to go. It was not long ago that I myself was sitting here dreaming of bigger and better things. I'm still dreaming. <laughs> we would like to acknowledge the Registrar of the Engineering Council who is here with us, Engineer Isaac Bedu. If, if you are here, we'd want to acknowledge you, please, sir. Thank you very much for being with us today. We are gradually advancing proceedings to a most solemn section of this occasion. And very soon we will be swearing in our inductees and making the presentation of certificates and other awards to very well-deserving individuals. So let us proceed into that. May I call on the President of the Ghana Institute of Architects, along with the Honorable Minister for Works and Housing, So we'll first have the swearing in section by the president of the Ghana Institute of Architects, architect Osaya Kuno. Yeah, inductees, may you be upstanding. And turn to page 84 of the brochure.
So you say after me. I shall work with this virtuous commitment to exercise the utmost duty to myself, my country, and my God. I shall uphold the ideals, follow and commit to the construction of the Ghana Institute of Architects. And endlessly endeavor to protect and further its just ends. I shall abide by the laws rules, legal orders, statutory policies, and measures of Ghana, the code of conduct, and the standards of professional practice, and the bylaws of Ghana Institute of Architects. I shall humbly seek success not through the measures of solicited personal publicity but by industrious meaningful application to my work and strive to merit a reputation for quality of service and ask for equitable dealing. I shall ask for fair remuneration for my professional services from my client and hold his or her interest and that of the general public over and above my own. I shall exercise my professional prerogative always with highest level of integrity. I shall dedicate myself to the pursuit of creative endeavors towards the goal of enlightened art and science generously sharing the results of my research, experience, and expertise. I shall remember to preserve and help regenerate the environment, both natural and built. May I always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling as an architect. And may I long experience the joy of improving the lives of those who seek my help. So help me God. Thank you. You may sit. May I now invite the Registrar of the Architects Registration Council, Dr. Yaa Butri, back here to also swear you in on the ARC side. Honorable Ministers, Mr. Boche, may I have the permission to induct the newly qualified actors? Can you please be outstanding? You are not yet qualified to practice in Ghana until you take the oath of ARC. <laughs> yes, you are only now members of the Ghana Institute of Architects. Yeah. 
can you kindly say this after me? Can you please uh, refer to page 85? We have the actor's oath. And I also want to mention that we have one of the inductees joining us online, uh, Mrs. Ohinewa Ohine Bekwe. Are you ready? I pledge to maintain the highest standards of moral, professional and ethical conduct. I will uphold, preserve, protect and defend the dignity and integrity of the profession of architecture, the built environment and construction industries. I will use my knowledge and skills to the best of my ability for the benefit of the public and my country. I will endeavor to keep abreast with architectural developments and maintain professional competency. I will observe building bylaws, regulations, and the laws governing the practice of architecture. And I will support the enforcement of such regulations and laws. In all these, I pledge voluntary with the full realization of the confidence and responsibility with which the public entrusts in me. So help me God. Honorable Minister, please I present to you now newly qualified architects. They are actually chartered architects and they are qualified to practice in Ghana. Shall we give them another round of applause please? We also want to note that in those two oaths, there was nothing about giving your stamps out for useful economic <laughs> benefits. Congratulations, all of you. You may be seated. We are about to present your certificates. And whilst we organize ourselves for that, we call on the Ghana Dance Ensemble to entertain us with some, with some beats, please. Ghana Dance Ensemble.
Thank you very much, Ghana Dance Ensemble. Can we recognize them with a hand of applause? A lot of our male counterparts, if they ask them to dance this way. Yeah, let's go on. We'll take the presentation of the certificates now. I would call back to the podium Dr. Emmanuel Yabuchi, along with the board chair, ARC board chair, and our honorable minister, Francis Asin Subwachi, the GIA president, the GIA honorary secretary, along with the deputy registrar of the ARC, Madam Josephine Pesese. Yes, so the arrangement is as follows. When your name is mentioned, you first take the GI certificate and you will then be given the ARC certificate at the same time. We are running behind time, so please um, bear with us. Madam High Commissioner, we would kindly welcome you as well to award the, the books, I believe. Well, I'll not be calling out architect, but everybody's name starts with an architect. So, uh, beginning today, please make sure that you always indicate architect something. Don't just write your name. You are chartered architects, okay. So, I should call it. Okay, architect Gabriel Yao Osei. Actor Jennifer Senna Dagado. <laughs> Actor Ophelia Akosia Kranchua in Tiamwa. Acted Paula Ben Smith. <laughs> Acted Clara Abba Edriba Douna. Architect Miguel Emmanuel Aduyobo. <laughs> Architect Ansbet Mona Abobo.
Acted Maxwell Osei Kofi Dati. Acted Benedicta Ama Nyama Frimpong. Acted Enos Ennext Etonio Kujo Klo. Acted Gillian Manson. <laughs> Acted Emmanuel Wardy. Architect Julian Frizal Aban. <laughs> Architect Victor Kwesi Ousu Setre. Architect Cheba for Joseph. <laughs> Architect Denny Bandua. Architect Samuel Deborah. Architect Ivan Squaming Cromer. Acted Divine Nutifafa I believe that Acted Divine will assist us with compliance. Actor Salisu Mohammed Al Hassan.
Acted Frederick Jemphy Autry. Architect Salamat Bint Ishak. <laughs> Architect Charity Asi Etuya. Architect Nana Kwabne Jamna Wu Asari. Architect Ni Oko Kwame Tete. Architect Francis Zato. Acted Philemon Chan Dapari Adwali. <laughs> Architect Efua Eide Tete. Architect Sophia Makion Deba. Architect Isaac Osei Kofi Boatim. Architect Paco Edu. Architect Sefas Achu Edinam Agbeko. Architect Lian Kankam Buedu. Mm -hmm. 
architect and next John Boto Aka Dankwa. Architect Samuel Kwekunya Kunyutin. Architect Salom Harold Salom Amuti. Architect Nanayao Ampon Jesse Adonton. <laughs> Architect Eko Asumeni. Architect William Boache and Kamam. <laughs> Architect Kingsley and Kama Atta Bedu. Architect Yasewa Bando. <laughs> Architect Festus Tengan Kumpe. Architect Otie Pokua Yantra. Architect William Annan Junior. Architect Ohinewa Ohine Bequin is joining us online. <laughs> Architect Samuel Kumsin. Architect Lois Nakwale Kote. 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 Architect Mrs. Bobby Egan Yatel. Mm -hmm. 
Actor John Ekins Taylor. Architect Elvis Adam Gadzi. Actor Rachel Apia Boafu. Architect Isaac Asari Dodo. Architect Simon Yale. Architect Jejin Maximilian Stromer. And architect Theophilus Obin Saki. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We join with your family and friends to congratulate you all and to welcome you onto the Registrar, the Register of Architects and the Industrial Profession. We want to quickly move things along and take our keynote address from our keynote speaker. We will have May I call on Madam Josephine Pesese to introduce our keynote speaker for the occasion. Honorable Chairman, Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, distinguished guests. Today's speaker is the Minister of Human Settlement and a member of Parliament of the Republic of South Africa. She is the co chairperson of Economic Sectors Employment and Infrastructure Development Cluster a member of the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress and the current chairperson of the Economic Transformation Subcommittee. Before her current role, she served as a minister in five portfolios, tourism, science and technology, communications and energy. She also acted as a minister of health at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. She started her career as a community developer in the non-governmental sector and subsequently joined the financial sector at First National Banks as a skills development specialist. Later, she worked in the business banking division at NetBank. She joined the public sector as a skills development facilitator at the National Health Laboratory Services. She was then recruited to become a director in the office of the then Deputy President of the Republic of South Africa, Ms. Pumzele Mblobo Nkonga. <laughs> she later became the Parliament Advisory Advisor to the then Deputy President of South Africa, Mr. Kenlema 
Mutulante. As a leader, she served as chairperson of the Transport Portfolio Committee at the city of Johannesburg Council. In 2009, she became a member of parliament, assuming several roles, including acting deputy chief whip of African National Congress and chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Telecommunications and Postal Services. She holds a Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Johannesburg, a postgraduate diploma in project management from the Dumlin College, a master's degree in public and development management from the University of the Western Sand and completed a program for leadership development at Harvard Business School. She's currently pursuing her PhD in state-owned enterprises and corporate governance at the University of Johannesburg. She served a full term in 2019 as a member of the Global Artificial Intelligence Council established by the World Economic Forum Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. As part of the council, she and other global leaders provided strategic guidance to the international community on priorities for artificial intelligence, machine learning, governance, cooperation, and shaping global policy development. In 2020, she joined other global leaders as a member of the Forum's Global Future Council on Sustainable Development Tourism, a multi-stakeholder knowledge network taxed to advance innovative thinking for a more resilient, inclusive, and sustainable future. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this is a deep well from which we can draw a lot of inspiration. May we all, with a resounding applause, welcome the key note speaker, Mamloko, Mamloko Nkensani Kubai. Thank you very much. Let me greet the program director. Let me appreciate in the program. Um, let me acknowledge the Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Francis Asenzo Buache, MP, High Commissioner of South Africa to Ghana, Her Excellency Jeanette Mason, Chairman and members of the Architecture Registration Council, President and members of the Ghana Institute of Architects, Register of Architects, MPs present, Mayor of Accra, distinguished invited guests, representatives of the press, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you. Is it afternoon already? It is tremendous honor for me to stand before you today as we gather to celebrate the induction of a generation of architects into this very noble profession. I want to express my deepest gratitude for the warm welcome and hospitality extended to me on this occasion. I bring you greetings and well wishes from the people of South Africa. It is fitting that the theme for the occasion is upholding the highest moral and ethical standards in the built environment. Because matters it refers are of paramount importance not only to your profession but to the entire world. I say this because we live in a continent in which the future social, political and environmental stratification will be defined by how we design the cities that Africa is developing. Agenda 2063 of the African Union projects that, I quote, the Africa of 2063 will be a predominantly urban future. It is estimated that more than two-thirds of the projected population of 2.5 billion will be living in urban centers by 2063." Unquote. It further predicts that because of rapid urbanization, this growth in urban population has many implications. Special planning, access to housing, provision 
of basic services, job creation, economic and social development. However, construction of housing to accommodate a trembling of urban population will be a major challenge for all of us. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, we have begun to see this challenge of urban settlement manifesting itself in our countries. The degree may differ in each of our countries, but the provision of housing for the poor in the gap market in urban centers has become the greatest challenge for governments across the world. This has led to the growth of slums and informal settlements, which are breeding ground for all kinds of social ills. This means that no more than any other time it is opportune for us to mobilize all the skills and other necessary resources at our disposal to tackle this challenge. In a rapidly changing world where urbanization is reshaping our cities, architects play a pivotal role in creating spaces that are not only functional but also ethical and sustainable. As the South African Minister of Human Settlements, I am keenly aware of the transformative power of architecture in shaping human settlements and I believe that there is tremendous potential for collaboration between architects in Ghana and in South Africa to exchange ideas and impact positively on our cities. Architects are not just designers of buildings, they are visionaries, problem solvers and custodians of our built environment. Our cities with their towering scape creepers, bustling streets and green spaces are the products of your creativity and expertise. But the responsibility of architects extends far beyond the external look of buildings and functionality. As architects, you are entrusted with the task of creating spaces that, promotes, that promote the well-being of individuals and the new urban agenda in the United Nations Decade of Action and provide a joint vision of partnership and action. Central to this plan is the elimination of slums and informal settlements so that cities can provide livelihood and for, the, for leaving no one behind and be more sustainable. Because without us ensuring that there's inclusivity, we will leave our citizens behind. In the context of human settlements, architects can be a force for positive change. Our cities face numerous challenges from housing shortages and inadequate infrastructure to environment degradation and social inequalities. Architects have the ability to address these challenges through innovative design, sustainable practices and a deep commitment to ethical principles. Architects must also be mindful of the impact of their work on communities and the environment. You have a duty to design buildings and spaces that are accessible, that are inclusive and that are environmentally responsible. This involves considering the needs of all members of society, including the most vulnerable of our community. And also, minimizing the ecological footprints of your projects. As an architect, you have a responsibility to contribute to the creation of the Africa we want, as envisioned in Agenda 2063. I firmly believe that collaboration between architects in Ghana and South Africa can lead to the exchange of ideas and the creation of innovation solutions to the challenges faced by our respective countries. Our experiences may differ, but our common goal of improving human settlements unites us all. By sharing our knowledge and expertise, we can learn from each other and collectively contribute to the betterment of our cities. Arrived in your beautiful country two days ago, and I'm leading a delegation that includes the business with the aim of strengthening collaboration 
and cooperation between the two nations. Forging technical, trade and business relations in the built environment will not only be born for our two economies, but more importantly, it will give practical expression to Africa Free Trade Agreement. His Excellency, Honorable Minister, I propose that we establish a platform for architects from Ghana and South Africa to collaborate on projects that address pressing urban challenges. This could involve joint design competitions, knowledge sharing workshops, and research partnerships. Together, we can leverage our collective wisdom to develop sustainable, ethical, and inclusive solutions that benefit our society. In conclusion, as we celebrate the induction of a new generation of architects in Ghana, let us commit ourselves to upholding the highest moral and ethical standards in the built environment. Let us embrace our role as architects of positive change in our cities and explore the possibilities of collaboration with our South African counterparts. Together we can create a future where our cities are not only functional and beautiful, but also are just, sustainable and ethical. As President Mandela taught us, he said, I quote, if you want the cooperation and humans of humans around you, you must make them feel that they are important, and you do that by being genuine and humble, unquote. Thank you, Minister Francis Asonso Buache, for being humble and genuine in, our cooperation, in your cooperation with us. We truly appreciate it as South Africa. Thank you to the people and your team, but most importantly to His Excellency, the President, whom I paid courtesy visit to yesterday, for the warm welcome, giving us hope, and knowing that we have brothers and sisters in this continent that we can work together. We will work together to build a better Africa for all of us, but that Africa is going to be built by us. To you in your journey, as architects, be, let it be marked by excellence, integrity, and a profound sense of purpose. Let us work together to build the pan-Africanist dream of a free and prosperous Africa that our forefathers dreamt about when they fought for the liberation of those years ago. I want to wish you and congratulate you. I'm looking forward to crossing lines with you, seeing you even in South Africa, doing wonders and creating and building the Africa we want. Thank you very much. Shall we continue to acknowledge the Honorable Minister? Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, and for touching on the issue of empowerment and agency that we as architects must have. We've taken certain keywords as well from your address. Accessibility, inclusivity, environmental responsibility, and cooperation. And we hope that we will all work with these in whatever scale of projects that we undertake. Thank you very much. We'll go quickly, permit me, um, to call upon to call upon our special guest of honor for this occasion. Um, we will skip the musical interlude so that we can make our time work. Honorable Francis Asen Subwachi, I have the honor of asking him to come and give us the special address. Mr. Chairman, Minister Mamuloko Kubai, the South African Minister for Human Settlements, and your esteemed delegation, the High Commissioner of South Africa to Ghana, Her Excellency Grace Mason, Chairman and members of the Architects Registration Council, President and members 
of the Ghana Institute of Architects and other professional bodies here in present, distinguished invited guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I am truly honored to once again join you this morning, well, this afternoon, as we celebrate the induction of a new cohort of qualified architects into the noble profession of designing and building our world. And let me say I'm very grateful to my colleague, Minister for Human Settlement, for graciously accepting to deliver the keynote address. I am confident that it will serve as a huge inspiration for the new architects, especially the women, given the kind of assignment job that she's done in her rather young life age. I'm also happy to see that the share of females in this year's um, architects is more than what we saw last year in, in previous years. I'm, I'm saying that because I believe that it is in the interest of the architect's uh, profession to have more females. Females, are, they are aesthetics conscious. If I'm saying it in local parlance, I would say, ma per DFA. And if it is that they are in the field of design, it is in the interest of the profession. And we have to find ways of encouraging more women into the profession. And this is a nostalgic feeling for me because it is a cure that I am inspiring, guiding my daughter to write a personal essay to apply for to a, a, a design school because she's chosen to be an architect. So she's working towards that. Mm. The theme for today's ceremony, upholding the highest moral and ethical standards in the built environment could not be more timely and important, or important, especially as we grapple with the challenges posed by poor development controls and illegal structures and development in our communities. The built environment is a reflection of societies or a society's values and aspirations. It shapes the way we live, work, and interact with our surroundings. It is a testament to our commitment to the well-being of our citizens and future generations. Therefore, maintaining the highest moral and ethical standards in the built environment is not just a choice. In fact, it is an obligation. However, poor development controls and the proliferation of illegal structures and developments have so far, have for far too long threatened the integrity and sustainability of our communities. These issues undermine the safety of our citizens, erode the aesthetic appeal of our cities and towns, and hinder the efficient allocation of resources. To address this menace effectively, we need the active participation of all stakeholders, including actors, urban planners, builders, and more importantly, metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies. The MMDAs play vital role in enforcing development controls, ensuring adherence to building regulations, and preventing illegal structures. As you may be aware, planning and enforcement of development control is a decentralized activity under our laws. 
Mr. Chairman, this morning when I got in and in my interaction with architect Foster, he did mention that they've gone around the country and they realized that even at the district assemblies, you don't even have architects there. I can say the same for planners and engineers. No wonder that today we are still have, uh, facing situations, the menace of buildings that are collapsing, even at the stage of construction, seeing flooding all over the country, people building on waterways. But I must be quick to add, just like Architect Foster mentioned this morning, that the assemblies are facing challenges. Many of you, when you are posted to the district, you rather want to stay in Accra and work in these corporate uh, institutions here in Accra, even rather than areas that you are most needed. And so that, and therefore, the assembly is facing these challenges, and therefore they are not able to perform their functions effectively in the issuance of development permits and building permits. In the light of the challenges, Mr. Chairman, I would like to suggest to you and other members of the professional bodies, institution of engineering, architects, surveyors, to come out with some form of an arrangement, an intelligent arrangement, whereby the district assemblies can actually uh, outsource that function of issuance of building permits and development permits to the professional bodies at a fee so that we will find a way of curbing the perennial flooding and the new phenomenon of uh, building being, um, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, collapsing uh, every day in our society. And I, I, this is, I take very serious uh, view of it and I'm imploring on you to seriously consider it together with your colleague development uh, professional bodies. The Ministry of Works and Housing recently spearheaded a comprehensive review of building regulation, LI 1630 of 1996. This step was taken in recognition of the fact that these regulations had become outdated due to the swift urbanization trends and the associated impact. We are pleased to announce the adoption of the new building regulations, LI 2465 of 2022, which is designed to equip municipal and metropolitan development authorities with the necessary tools to effectively address the challenges posed by a rapidly changing built environment. I therefore urge the MMDA to capitalize on the opportunities provided by these uh, new building regulations. They serve as a powerful resource to enhance your ability to monitor and regulate development in our communities. Ladies and gentlemen, these notwithstanding, the success of MMDAs in performing this crucial role depends on adequate resourcing, both technical and financial. Without the necessary resources, our MMDAs are unable to carry out their responsibilities effectively. I want to take this moment to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of the MMDAs who have been working tirelessly to maintain order and standards in our urban areas. But to better combat the proliferation of illegal structures and substandard uh, development, we must commit to providing them with the needed resources to excel in their roles. To strengthen the technical capabilities of our municipality and municipal development authorities, it is imperative that we co collaborate to provide training and development opportunities for these personnel, for their personnel. This collaborative effort will empower them with the knowledge and skills needed to effectively and comprehensively 
understand and enforce golden regulations. I am reliably informed that as part of the 60th anniversary celebration of the Ghana Institute of Architects, the Institute has undertaken a series of town hall meetings at the assembly level. These gatherings aim at collecting valuable information, gain insights into the challenges faced, and offer solutions that can enhance the operations of the MMDAs with the invaluable support of the professionals in the built environment. Let me take this opportunity to commend the Ghana Institute of Architects for this commendable initiative and encourage other professional bodies to emulate this ingenuity. In conclusion, as we celebrate the induction of new architects, let us also reflect on the critical role we play in upholding the highest moral and ethical standards in the profession. Architects, in collaboration with MMDAs and other stakeholders, can create a world that is not only aesthetically pleasing, but also safe, sustainable, and conducive for human well-being. I call upon all of us, architects, planners, surveyors, engineers, policy makers, and citizens to work hard in hand, hand in hand, to ensure that development controls are enforced, illegal structures are eradicated, and the highest ethical standards are being held. Mr. Chairman, I'm equally happy to be here and also to see that we have new architects from security agencies such as the Army and the Fire um, Service, and I'm sure later we have police, we have police and others. We need people from such backgrounds to help us formulate better policies and legislation in our country. It is only through the collaborative effort that we can build a future where our cities and towns are not just structures of brick and mortar, but also symbols of our commitment to the well-being of our people. I now have the singular honor, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Minister, Mr. Chairman, to declare the 2023 batch of architects duly inducted. So I thank you for your attention and God bless us all. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Indeed, we face critical but surmountable challenges as a country and as a continent if we choose to work together. It's no wonder one of our historical leaders has decided to reincarnate himself back into the profession. Architect Kwame Nkrumah, <laughs> we expect great things from you. Yeah. We'll take the presentation of the awards at this point to deserving best candidates who have distinguished themselves beyond and above. We want to call on the following persons to help with the presentation of these awards to these deserving candidates. Madam Josephine Becker says, if you can assist us with the presentation of the awards. We first call on the head of department of KNUST. Professor Rexford Asase Opol. <laughs> to award the best candidates in paper one, Mr. Gabriel Yao Osei.
Mr. Chair, permits me, uh, Professor Rex. Professor Rexford, as Asio Pong will present the best candidates for paper two instead. Madam Jennifer Senna Dagadu. Thank you very much, Professor. Shall we call on the head of department of Central University to present the best candidates in paper one, Mr. Gabriel Yao Osei, <laughs> Madam Nanette. Thank you very much, Madam Nanette. Mr. Chair, I call on you to present the third overall Best Candidates Award to Madam Ophelia Akosia Kranchwa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Honorable Minister Francis Asensu, we will call on you to present the second overall Best Candidate Award to architect Jennifer Senna Dagadu, who was also Best Candidate in Paper 2. A round of applause for her. Madam Minister, may we pray your indulgence to present the overall Best Candidate Award <laughs> to architect Gabriel Yao Osei. May we be upstanding to recognize all our candidates. Congratulations, Architect Gabriel Yawase, for distinguishing yourself over and above. Very well deserved. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are slowly coming to the end of proceedings. We will like to again acknowledge all our sponsors for making this event possible. Mr. Chair, we will take your closing remarks at this point, after which we will have the vote of thanks by the 2023 class rep. Um, thank you very much. A lot of things have been said today, and um, a number of challenges have been thrown. Uh, I believe. Um, I saw lots of you busy with your phones. I don't know whether we're taking notes or we're sending pictures. <laughs> but whatever it is, the challenges are clear. We need collaboration. Call it South-South collaboration if you like. Uh, Madam Minister has mentioned that the South African government is ready to collaborate with us here. So this is a challenge that is being thrown to you. You're coming out this year. So please take this as an opportunity, uh, exchanges of ideas always turn out giving us a better product. She emphasized that uh, we're all building a common future and that our challenges and issues we face in the urban uh, milieu are the same. So let's take this and then work together. And again, our minister threw another challenge to us, and I believe some work has started on that, where he stressed on collaboration between the 
built environment professionals, and then the MMDs. And uh, indeed, uh, like I said, something has been is starting already, but he's given us more, more vim, more vim to move on. Uh, we also recognize a need for development control uh, because a lot of the issues that we face today are clearly, clearly due to the absence of development control, the lack of enforcement. He mentioned also that the a number of people from the security agencies here. There's one from the military, there's fire service. Uh, we know we have quite a number in the, the Navy. We also have some in the, the Air Force. And then uh, I know the Ghana Police Service has at least three, four architects there. So we'll need all of you to come on board and let's see how we can work towards building uh, a better, I'd say, Africa, because we're all pan Africans here. So just to sum up, once more I'd like to congratulate all of you. Um, there's somebody has been identified as the reincarnation and incidentally you're also the tallest so uh, maybe uh, that's a message to you. Uh, there's uh, my friend also, the, the French man, he might be the shortest but but uh, yeah, hello. <laughs> but I suppose let's all work together from the tallest to the shortest <laughs> and let's get things done. And once more, it's good to see so many women. Um, when we were in school, the out of the percentage was like just two or three women out of a class of 30, 40. But now where gender parity is getting better, and we encourage you to go out there, talk to more ladies, and ask them to come on board. The woman makes the home, the home makes the settlement. Settlement makes the city, and the city makes the country. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Architect Ernest Kujo Klu. <laughs> Kindly give us the vote of thanks. There were moments when we questioned our life choices. Why did I choose this field? Throughout our education and training process to become architects, the thoughts has probably crossed our minds once or twice, and for some of us, severally. But that's what makes us architects. We love a challenge, and we never back down from turning imaginations into realities. The commitment and dedication and the determination to be inducted in this noble institution is a testament of our great resolve. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in us will see it and carry it on to the completion until the day of Christ Jesus. On behalf of the inducting class of 2023, we first and foremost want to express our gratitude to God for taking us through the entire process. We also render our profound gratitude, our profound thanks to the Architects Registration Council Board and the Examination Board of the Ghana Institute of Architects, without which our journey through the pre-examination interviews, our seminars, our rating examinations, our post-exams interviews would have been difficult. Special thanks goes to our seminar resource personnel for taking us through the seminars through which we've learned so much, not only for the examinations, but for our practice as architects. To the external auditors, education committee of both ARC and GIA, the bosses in our respective firms, staff of GIA and ARC, friends and families, and everyone present here, we say God bless you for your immense support. Lastly, to the inducting class, I want to congratulate each and, one, each and every one of you on this achievement. As we step into the world, let us remember the wisdom of Maya Lin, who said, I try to give people a different view 
of looking at our surroundings. That's art to me. Let us be architects who give people a new perspective, who shape the world around us with fresh eyes and innovative ideas. Congratulations, and may our future be as bright as the sun we've perfectly positioned in our renders, and may, us, and may we stand tall as our structures would. God bless us all. Well done, Ernest, for also acknowledging your resource persons who took their time out to help you all through this time. Well done for that. We would like to thank everyone for bearing with us, for being here to celebrate these 55 inductees. You've all been a very warm, receptive audience. Until next year when we meet here again, we want to thank our distinguished persons and all other persons here with us, the um, agencies and institutions that have taken out their time to be here with us. We will end with a closing prayer in the absence of any further matters. The way we started, architect Nathaniel Ninai, if you can lead us in prayer to close us. Let us bow our heads again. Father, we thank you for what you have done for us today. Our young ones, the inductees, are grateful to you. You started a program with us, and Lord, you have ended well with us. The Bible says you are the beginning, and you are also the end. And you make it all things beautiful in your own time. And Lord, you are beholding what you have done for your children. Father, at this moment, as they step forth into the world for another phase of the profession, I pray that, Lord, your grace and mercies will remain with them. Father, protect them in the path of righteousness. Father, keep them. Father, keep them in the path of integrity. Father, I pray, let jobs never finish on their table. Guide them in the path of prosperity. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, everyone. We, we will allow our dignitaries to leave first, and then we'll follow with the inductees, and then the, the General Assembly here can also disperse. I have been your MC for the occasion, Ruth Ann Richardson. I believe that Madam... Madam... Let, let me get the name... <laughs> Right. Madam Mamloko Kubai would love to have a picture with all the female newly inducted architects. So kindly, when you proceed out, organize yourselves quickly for that picture opportunity. Okay. We'll actually have that picture taken here. Refreshments will also be served outside as we um, proceed. But let us organize ourselves for that picture. And sit out with the meals as well. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you.
standing whilst our dignitaries proceed out and then we follow suit. Thank you.